there you see him coming to the ring now. Kevin Sullivan, the master of the occult. One of the strangest, most bizarre individuals in the sport today. There's only a handful of guys left that are doing business longer than me. He is a, a mind a manipulator of the highest degree. Anybody that follows me gives up something. And I'm in control. Kevin Sullivan will do time. absolutely anything in the world to win a match. Fire is wrong. You have no morals, no rules, no anything. This man is just vicious. Took me to the pyramid and gave me the beetle left to chew on. It seems like he's all out in space. Kevin Sullivan the entering the ring now. I came from a pretty conservative background, you know, Irish Catholic. But they said, take it and run with it and see what you want to do in your life, you know. You, you only live once, and they were nice enough to kind of encourage me. They certainly didn't discourage me. This is a picture of my great-great-great-uncle, John L. Sullivan, and that's John L. with the first belt given to uh, a boxing champion. That was from the Police Gazette. One of my favorite pictures, Andre, my brother, and myself. That was a friend of mine's restaurant in East Boston. And we came out, and he's holding us like two children. And that's a picture of Ali and I. The only guy that ever, ever was intimidated by, by meeting him. He was something else. This is the only thing I have from the wrestling business. It's got Brody and Hanson were in the main event against White Wolf and Jay Strombo, and I was on the one of the opening matches with Pete Sanchez. I wrestled as an amateur, and I used to wrestle at the Boston YMCA Union. It's a haven for amateur wrestlers, but I would see the pro wrestlers there working out with the weights and stuff. And a guy came up to me and said, do you want to work out? I said, yeah. And I would, Working out with him. There goes a terrific arm lock, and Red Barry has a fist. So he kind of introduced me to pro wrestling, and I, he brought me up to Montreal. I got a match there, which I wasn't even smart to what was going on. I kept on saying, when are they going to tell me what to do? When are they going to tell me what to do? Nobody gave me a finish, and I wrestled this for not for shit. Pushed him in the second row by mistake, and he got up, and I thought I was going to have my hands full when I got back and he said, yelled at the referee, didn't anybody smile this kid up? Now making his way to the ring for Boston, Massachusetts, weighing at 228 pounds, Kevin Sullivan. I went back to Boston to collect my belongings and then I went down south. I was wrestling old timers. Eddie Graham coming in, here's the man who's got the hardest punch in wrestling history. I'm a young kid coming into their business, it was their business and they had protected it and they were, you know, roughed me up a little. They were, Push me around the mat. Kevin and, Sullivan. They'd lean on me. and Kevin Sullivan, the Boston Battler, caught in a tough situation here. And after they wiped me up for about a month and a half around the ring, they started to give me something. I got to be Ken Lucas's tag team partner. Ken Lucas! The biggest over guy in the history of the Gulf Coast, him and Bob Kelly. It's a different time and a different era. We're in the cars together, three or four of us. And I think that's something that's missing. We'll never come back. The guy's going to go in cars and drive that far. But back then, it was almost like a learning lesson. If you were lucky enough as a young guy to get in there with a veteran, that knew something, and especially one that drew money, you'd listen to them, and uh, hopefully you'll come away with something. So I was working almost every night for three and a half years before I felt that it, the light bulb came on. Good, I've had a lot of strange things happen to me lately, but this is it. I used to throw a horrible punch, and I think now the guys are going back to forearms because they're smarter, but. I used to be able to, if I couldn't at first, I tied a tin can so it would be this level or this level, and I'd throw a punch at it and keep on throwing punches at it until you could wind up and throw a punch without making the tin can move too much so you could actually hit somebody on the button with that. Ken Mansfield going up to the second row. Wow! Sullivan caught him coming off a hard right haymaker, another one. So you want to throw it and hit the can or at least so it doesn't move. So you want to be able to throw it so it looks like it's on, so it's more of a distance thing that 
even though it's pre-range, you gotta protect it a little. Brock Lesnar's on top because people think he's the toughest SOB in the world. They think he's legit. And I think that goes back to when I was a kid and you used to go to the wrestling matches. I thought it was all fake except for the Sheik. The strange man. The Sheik, and the Sheik pulls him out on the concrete. I, mean, I don't know how that equates in thinking, but that's how a lot of people thought. All the, the wrestling's all fake except the Sheik or the world title match or whatever. <laughs> Got to book a time when I was in Florida with uh, Eddie. Uh, Tampa ran on Tuesdays. And the way they would cool you off in Tampa was they wouldn't drop you on the card. They'd send you to Fort Myers, which ran on Tuesdays. So I got down there, and Dickie Slater and I were working. The referee came to Slater and said, Eddie wants you and Kevin to get together and come up with a finish because you're back in for a while. So Dickie and I went in the office the next day and said, uh, how long were we there? And he said, well, I'll give you six weeks, see what you can do. And Dickie and I started booking it together. We got to experiment in the town, and I'm sure the referee was reporting to Eddie where we were going and how far we were going. And I was around a lot of guys like uh, Gary Hart, Curtis, Lewin, guys that had booked and booked successfully that, you know, they would kind of show me which way to go. And Blackjack Mulligan, too. And it's going to be kiss you goodbye, Kevin Sullivan, because I'm going to end your career before this is over with. Another guy that was very influential was Vince Sr. At one time, nobody was in the room. We used to do the TV in the old Philadelphia arena where they did Rocky, the original Rocky. And I went and I looked at his book and I was looking at it and he had a year booked and he had Madison Square Garden. Uh, the top three matches from Madison Square Garden, he had all the way booked for a year and I'm saying, how could he do this? You know, some guys are getting three matches of Bruno, some guys are getting one, a few are getting two and I'm looking at this and they caught me and said, what are you doing? I said, I don't know how you do it. And he said, you want to learn? He said, I said, yeah, so he showed me kind of things. So the apple didn't fall far from the tree with Vince Jr. I don't care what anybody says. You don't put 100,000 people in a building if you don't know what you're doing, okay? I saw a match Ric Flair had with uh, Carlos Colon and Joe Frazier wound up and hit him just like that. Knocked Rick out. I thought it took his head off. Joe must have been playing with cans too.